If your plants look like this and your neighbor's plants look like that, then you actually may be missing three of the weirdest additions you can make to your garden. And that's what we're gonna talk about here today. And the reason why I'm so confident in the fact that I'm going to be able to explode the growth in your garden is because I have a Bachelor of Science in Soil Science, oddly enough, it's a thing. And I've been working in the world of agriculture for over a decade gardening since I was five years old. So I like to think I have a little bit of a handle when it comes to plant and soil science and gardening. But even more than that, this channel will help you enormously because the geek crew, the commenters, usually have a ton of good information as well. So if you are misled or you don't understand what I'm talking about, then you need to check out those comments down below because they will tell you exactly what you need to know. They're usually better at explaining things than me. Okay, so it turns out number one is actually silicon. When most gardeners think of fertilizer, we think of NPK. Maybe some of us think about secondary nutrients and macronutrients. Geek crew, I know that you guys do, but not many think of things like silicon. And it is quite literally the sidekick that your plants are missing. It builds cell wall strength, it improves water retention, and helps your plant stand taller. This guy was actually grown in a different potting soil. In 2015, there was a meta-analysis done on silicon and looking at exactly what it does for plants. And overall, they found that in tomatoes and cucumbers in particular, there was an absolute increase in yield. And the reason for that increase in yield was because it had a better stress tolerance and it also was more resistant to pest damage. The tomato trial specifically showed a 20% increase in yield due to the addition of silicon on a weekly basis. Now the tactical tip here to make it really easy to do is actually to use either a potting soil that contains silicon or you can add things like rice hulls which are naturally high in silicon. Now you can Add it weekly but the most important time to do it is when it's in the vegetative state so this is the state after seedling stage but before things begin to flower so right about now and remember silicon doesn't feed the plants it gives the plants like an energy drink, a Red Bull. It keeps them amped up. It's like sniffing salt, but for plants. My way of doing this is actually just to use the Sunshine Mix number four because it has resilience in it. And that is literally a name brand for a addition that's silicon based. I actually had a plant that was planted in just like a pro mix vegetable garden soil because I ran out of Sunshine Mix number four and you can physically see the difference between the two plants. It's insane. Now that doesn't factor just down to silicon, but it actually factors down into a number of different reasons why it was a better soil but regardless it's definitely an addition you want to consider so you might be thinking if there's sunshine out it is warm but here's the misdirection in that statement the ambient air may be 25 or 30 or 35 in may already where i am which is insane by the way hence the haze that is forest fires right now but the soil itself tends to be a lot cooler around the 10 15 degree mark and this can change the metabolism of your plants and therefore the growth and the success. In 2021, there was a study actually done on this and it specifically looked at soil temperatures and the metabolism of plants. And when we talk about metabolism, there are three very specific attributes or systems that are shut down or throttled. Nutrient uptake, overall biomass accumulation, both above and below ground, and the speed in which the plant flowers. So in the past, if you've dealt with smaller plants that never seem to get bigger, if you've dealt with plants that seem to have yellowing leaves despite the fact that you know your soil is fine and you've been adding fertilizer, chlorosis is another very famous example of this, or you just think to yourself, why is nothing flowering? it probably is coming down to your soil temp. I actually had someone from the Gate Crew comment on a reel I made over on Instagram, and I spoke to the fact that in our cooler soils, it's not uncommon for things like seeds to actually rot if you decide to go in too early prior to actually checking the soil temp. And they messaged back after they watched that reel, dug down deep, and they found out that yes, all their bean seeds were actually turning into absolute mush. So the roots kind of do something similar. Now the tactical tip here is to help warm up those roots. One way I do this for for things like peppers, as an example, is to actually put them in containers. These containers can very easily be moved around as needed, and it allows for a warmer root system. I get flowers on my peppers incredibly quickly compared 
to if I put them in ground. Now, not everything can go in containers and the container gardeners are laughing right now thinking I've got the best of both worlds. I can use Sunshine Mix 4 and containers and I am going to have the best garden. And you probably arguably could. But when it comes to stuff in ground, we wanna make sure that our mulch is removed until that soil actually begins to warm up. Or we wanna make sure that we're using like a black tarp or some sort of cover to actually help warm those roots initially. Once we hit that 20 to 25 degrees Celsius mark with our soil temp thermometers, we know that then you can put that mulch on top. Generally a good indicator for this is when you begin to see some new growth on your transplants and or you're beginning to see seeds sprout and them also putting on new growth that is outside of just the regular cotyledon. Behind me here is actually one way in which I do this to a lesser degree and this is more so to get an ambient temperature up around the tomatoes in this case and that is just buckets with the bottoms cut off and I do transplant them into these and then I will leave them like this for around a week maybe two before I pop them off. So this one is a little bit odd and it's kind of new age science, but that is actually kelp extract. Turns out that kelp extract is loaded with a number of plant hormones just naturally. Cytokinins, gibberellins, and auxins is an example. We've spoken about all three of these hormones in the past and all of them do different things in the plant that are incredibly important to their growth. Just a quick synopsis on what do these three do? They are completely responsible for cell division and stress tolerance. So, and their ability to survive things like lack of nutrients, pests, mechanical manipulation from wind or hail, you get the idea. So there actually was a meta-analysis done in 2021. This is, like I said, pretty new science. And it showed that kelp extract actually increased the root volume by 30%, which in turn helped to increase the yields. And this was all done while actually reducing the amount of fertilizer that was needed to sustain, in this case, tomato plants. Similar to how we have stress management in a can. So if you're wanting to put your plant through some boot camp and let them come out on the other side, powerful and big, silicone, hot roots, warm roots, not hot, I guess. Well, they can be hot if you want them because then they'll make more friends. They'll call all the honeybees to the yard. I digress, or kelp, try them out. I'll put links down below. Talk to you guys later, bye. By the way, all my videos are gonna be like a haze of forest fire season. That's all I have to say.